Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I'm super excited to share this with you guys. Um, I, I think maybe I've finally lost it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so this is a very special unboxing. Um, this is mine. I purchased this brand new from Recon One. This is the most expensive knife that I have ever purchased. And I'm not trying to brag or flex or anything. This is a knife that I reviewed a long time ago, somewhere between a year and a year and a half ago. And uh, I was very excited about it. I thought it was amazing. I was, uh, I was shy about the price, you know, absolutely. But I told myself, at least in my mind, I will own this knife one day. I've seen it pop up on a few different retailers and at the time, you know, every time I looked at it, it said, not right now, not right now. And I finally thought, you know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and go for it. And um, I'm excited to share it with you. I have already been inside the box, uh, but I'm not really ruining, it, ruining anything. I'm not taking away any, you know, shared first time experience because I've already talked about it. But I still want to share it with you guys. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So what do we have here? We have a Rockstead. Um, lots of people watching right now are very familiar with Rockstead. Uh, but there are probably lots of people right now who are not familiar with Rockstead. So I'll invite you, after I've unboxed it, to check out my original review. But I'll also be uh, providing some additional details in this unboxing about the knife. Rockstead knives are made in Japan. Box is neat. I Honestly, I don't care too much about the box. There's some special details here, but first... Uh, Let's um, let's take a look at the knife together. Oh boy. We have carbon fiber scales, very interesting, very unique carbon fiber scales, blue titanium liners, and the highlight. Oh yeah. Um, that is a truly mirror polished convex ground Zero Edge ZDP 189 blade. <laughs> oh my goodness. So this, to me, is a thing of pinnacle beauty. The, uh, the, the profile of the knife by itself is amazing, right? The combination of the carbon fiber and blue titanium liners, which is not something I normally go for, but the way that they shadow box that is so beautiful. Profile of the blade, so beautiful. What on earth makes this knife so expensive? I'll invite you um, at any time to go check out not only my review, like I said, but also Rockstead's cut test videos where they show off exactly what these knives are capable of. ZDP 189, which is one of the steels they use, they have a proprietary YX7R or something like that. This is the ZDP 189. That's a steel we see periodically in other knives that you can get for way less money, right? It's not just the steel. Number one, they heat treat these things. In fact, every uh, single one of them is poked and tested uh, for Rockwell hardness. Each one of these is hardened to around 67 HRC, which is really, really hard. Now, there are definitely other companies who approach that, right? But that's hard stuff. ZDP 189 already has the potential for insane edge retention. Um, very near uh, K390. So every step further that it's hardened makes that, uh, that edge retention, you know, potential higher and higher and higher. But it's not just that. They also grind these in a way, it's, it's a convex grind, so it comes sort of rounded outwards, the opposite of a hollow grind. So what's lost, a lot of what's lost in the toughness of um, hardening at that high is regained in a way um, by the edge stability benefits of a convex grind. It also comes to a basically a zero edge, meaning, as you can see there, there is no final cutting bevel. It just becomes the edge. Then they mirror polish it, and I mean it is a true mirror polish. There are lots of other less expensive knives out there sporting a mirror polish of sorts, but it really just turns out to be a very, very, very high polish where you can still see some of the lines, some of the belt lines, this is a true and complete mirror, which does add uh, to, you know, in a way, I mean, like it passes through material, glides through material really easily. 
all of these things together, right? The high hardness of ZDP 189, the convex uh, grind, and that zero edge culminate to a cutting potential that is rivaled by almost nothing else out there. I did not really comprehend that when I reviewed this knife the first time. You can find evidence of this on YouTube, right? Not only just go read it, on, you, I mean, you can read it on their website, right? But if you wanna see what these things are capable of, there's lots of videos on YouTube from Rockstead and other people testing the edge out. These knives are capable of passing through manila rope 1,000 times and then continuing to be shaving sharp. There, that, as far as the capability, there are lots of other incredibly, you know, super compositions out there that uh, advertise amazing cutting performance, but very, very few knives in their complete form can actually do that. Uh, this has some of the most supreme cutting ability that is imaginable. Um, so it's not just the carbon fiber, it's not just the titanium, right? It's everything together. A lot of what you're paying for here, and again, you know, a lot, to a lot of people say, okay, so you're paying $1,500 for a mirror polish and incredible cutting performance, you know, well, I don't really need that. Well, yeah, not everybody needs that. In fact, I would say very, very few people need that. These are numbered, right? So you can see there, there aren't very many of these out there. So they're not necessarily mass producing these. Um, so it's just kind of the essence of it that I wanted to enjoy. Um, but the mirror polishing alone, to truly mirror polish a blade, you're going to pay a lot of money for that, just for the blade. In fact, other truly mirror polish knives out there will generally run you well over $1,000. Like I said, again, if it's a mirror polished blade that's in the hundreds of dollars territory, it's probably not truly mirror polished. Does everybody need that? No. Does everybody want that? No, right? This knife has a lot of elements that aren't gonna be valuable to a lot of people, but it, it absolutely factually costs a lot of money and a lot of time to create a blade like this. I'll tell you the crazy thing here. Titanium liner lock, incredibly smooth. It runs on giant uh, phosphor bronze washers and a pivot, uh, <laughs> pivot, pivot bushing, much like a Chris Reeve knife. In fact, disassembly is also very similar. There's only a couple of screws. You don't need to take out the pocket clip screw. It's just a screw back here and a screw back here. And by the way, yeah, I know people want to say that pocket clip is so basic for such an expensive knife. Yeah, I totally agree with you guys. I said that in the original review as well. It is very functional though. I'll tell you about how I know that here in a second. Um, this knife is incredibly simple to take apart. Uh, so that's really, really cool. This thing got so smooth, even on those giant phosphor bronze washers that as you can see, I'm already able to flip it out after just one day of letting it break in. In fact, I can even do the reverse flick on it. That's wonderful. I love titanium liner locks. I've actually come to prefer them over frame locks, as I've said many, many times. Um, I just like that I don't have to worry about where to put my fingers when I'm deploying it. And I also like that my grip, no matter how tight, does not actually affect the lockup, which by the way is completely and totally solid. This knife all the way around came perfect, as you should expect for a knife that's this expensive. So, a weird feeling washed over me when I opened this up. My initial plan was, obviously, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, that's great, he's gonna safe queen it. That's kind of what he does with some of those special pieces, right? I have knives in my collection that are very expensive that I use. Knives that cost $400, $600, some of them uh, approaching $800 that I actually use. And then other knives that are the same price or less expensive that I don't use for one reason or another. It's just kind of a gut feeling thing. This knife, initially I thought this will be kind of a crowning jewel of my collection right now. I'm probably not gonna use it. For whatever reason, guys, I was met with this overwhelming urge to carry and use this thing. Not 10 minutes after I unboxed it, I ended up putting it in my pocket, carrying it to my son's t-ball game. Um, not Obviously not getting it out there, but coming back and cutting some cardboard and paper with it. The cutting performance of this knife is absolutely ridiculous. I get a piece of paper right here. Not that this is really gonna prove anything, but the ability of this knife to slice <laughs> is absolutely amazing. Got some cardboard, some paper, um, just basic stuff. Yeah, I've decided that um, this is not gonna go in a display case, right? There's always at least one comment in the comment section of somebody saying, and they're kind of justified in thinking this, 
okay, those really expensive knives are cool, right? And this maybe this particular Rockstead really has some amazing cutting performance and is actually built to be used considering the phosphor bronze washers and the, you know, the liner lock setup and the, the ergonomic profile, which by the way is just fantastic. But nobody's actually gonna carry and use those, right? Who would carry and use them? I remember thinking like that slowly climbing the ladder and initially I'll, I'll admit to you before I unboxed it that was my my plan was to just have it and not use it no you know what guys I think I am gonna carry and use this knife for what basic knife stuff my knives don't get an insane workout I use knives for basically what you'd expect to use a knife for opening packages opening boxes maybe some rope maybe some wood here and there if I'm doing an outdoor project a lot of times it's just opening up the package of whatever it is that I'm working with when I do little home projects here and there, right? And if I need something more durable, then I'll use a different tool. But yeah, I just don't, I don't think I want to let this thing sit. I don't think I want to just pick it up periodically and admire it. I have other knives in my collection that I do that with. I think I want to carry and use this thing. Now, does that mean that I'm gonna, you know, exclusively EDC this and nothing else? No. But uh, this has been in my pocket all day today and the tail end of yesterday, and I think that this is going to be a regular part of my rotation now. I don't, I don't think that I care too much if it's going to get a scratch on it. Um, I'm not worried about it being durable. It's absolutely durable. <laughs> it's absolutely built to be carried and used. And I honestly can't wait to use this blade. If it uh, you know, becomes dull in like two years, <laughs> which is likely going to be the case because again, I'm just getting my knives out a few times a week, you know, or taking them out of my pocket a couple of times a week, maybe five, ten times a week max to do just simple cuts, right? So after two years, when it finally does become dull as a part of Rockstead's warranty, I could send it back to them and have it sharpened right back to brand spanking new. That's fine with me. Aside from the $1,500 price tag, this thing is absolutely an ideal or one of many, you know, ideal choices out there because there's a lot of ideal choices, right? This thing is absolutely ideal for use. It's also ideal as far as like my standards, like what I look for in a knife. Overall length coming in at eight and a quarter. Blade length, it's actually about 3.6. Cutting edge is about 3.4. Oh my gosh. Thumb stud opener running on giant phosphor bronze washers. Beautiful contoured scales. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, I, I am so happy about this purchase. A lot of this was Epic Snuggle Bunny's fault. I've been talking with him a little bit about his, um, and I've been looking at his on his Instagram. And honestly, the, the seed was planted when I handled the, uh, the one just like this a long time ago when I reviewed it. It's been in my head ever since. I can't say I'm lusting after anything right now that's more expensive than this. And a lot of people might, might be wondering, is this the custom that you said you were going to get, right, that you kept hinting at? No, believe it or not, that is still on the way. This also is not a custom. This is an extremely high-end production knife with enough handwork in it that you could easily call it a mid-tech. You'll hear people classify this as a production knife, and there are plenty of production elements here, but the amount of human work that went into the blade alone is far more than most knives that we classify as mid-tech, right? So however you want to classify it, yeah, we have some machine and we have some human. A lot of human. Oh my gosh, an absolute ton of human. <laughs> oh, this is a dream come true. I couldn't be happier with it. It's not going to be for everybody. In fact, I expect, you know, a fair amount of criticism for the decision alone down in the comment section, but that's fine. As you guys know, my own personal purchases are not really affected by what other people think. Some people are going to really like this, though. And I can tell you, if you are the type of person to be considering spending this much money on a knife, you will likely be very, very happy with a Rockstead. I will add as a side note to the end of this, if you're wondering, you own it now, you're obviously in the honeymoon phase, but seriously, do you think it's really worth $1,500? Here's my honest answer. The Rockstead Higo 2 that's a titanium frame lock, it's exactly the same thing, but instead of a titanium liner lock, it's a titanium frame lock. That knife comes in at $1,250, and I think I can kind of understand how they got there, right? Again, because of the blade, like I said, if you're looking for a truly mirror-polished blade, and you're also looking for excellent tolerances, right, 
you're looking for like all of that work that went into it if that value I can understand how they got there I can understand how we got to well over the one thousand dollar mark because truthfully nothing under a thousand dollars comes anywhere close to what this you know culminated into right there's just nothing else out there like that. not that anybody needs it just saying like if we're talking about other knives you know that are less expensive. No, nothing's really coming close to the work that went into that, that went into something like this. So I can understand how, but I don't really know what makes this particular Higo to two hundred and fifty dollars more than the titanium variant. I think uh, you know this is carbon fiber and titanium, right? So it's slightly more complicated than the titanium frame lock. I think I could I could understand an additional one hundred dollars, so thirteen fifty. I have no idea how they got to fifteen hundred, right? But despite that, me going, I, don't, I kind of feel like this is a little overpriced, right? It was still valuable enough to me to draw me in. It was still enough for me to be able to overlook it, right? So it's going to be a personal preference thing to a lot of people who are even kind of considering it. Different than the situation, of course, with the James brand, the Barnes knife that was somewhere between $150 and $200 overpriced. That's a massive chunk of the the, the percentage there of overpricedness is much different since, you know, in my mind, that's a four to four hundred and fifty dollar knife and they want six hundred dollars for it. Right. This one, the percentage of overpricedness is smaller. So it's there was more of a want there. And this is more of a knife. Right. So, I mean, I guess that kind of maybe that helps make sense a little bit. I don't know. In any case, I'm super, super excited about this. Expect to see um, some videos and pictures on Instagram, absolutely. I'm excited to carry this. Um, I, I'm excited to be, you know, a reference point for people who, you know, assume, again, understandably, that people don't carry these knives. I wanna, I'm gonna carry this, I'm gonna use it. Guys, that's gonna be pretty much it today. I will link Rockstead Knives right down in the description so you can check them out if you want to. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.